Okay, so uh, today is uh, March 7th, 2022, and we'll pay homage to three architects, all born on March 7th. We start with Baltasare Peruzzi, uh, as you can see, born in 1481. In fact, he was born, uh, let's me see if I can count properly, 16, uh, no, six years after Michelangelo was born. Michelangelo was born in 1475 and uh, Peruzzi in uh, 1481. This was the man, uh, I mean, <laughs> in an engraving, uh, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes these engravings are uh, idealized and uh, they often they are, they are made uh, sometimes at a significant time after after the depicted person died. So let's read, Baltasare Tommaso Peruzzi was an Italian architect and painter, you see, born March 7th, born in a small town near Siena and died in Rome. He worked for many years with Bramante, Raphael, and later San Gallo during the erection of New St. Peter's. He returned to his native Siena after the sack of Rome where he was employed as architect to the Republic. For the Sienese, he built new fortifications for the city and designed, though did not build, a remarkable dam on the Bruna River near Giuncarico. He seems to have moved back to Rome permanently by 1535, but he died there the following year and was buried in the rotunda of the Pantheon near Raphael. Can you imagine? I mean, uh, obviously, uh, Peruzzi was very appreciated if he was buried in the Pantheon near Raphael. Anyway, a portrait of him. Um, uh, we saw a better one, I would say, here. He was, this was part of the famous book by Giorgio Vasari, uh, The Lives of Famous uh, Artists and Architects and so on. Some drawings of Peruzzi. Um, not all of them have a great resolution, but you see, he was, you know, a true Renaissance man who, you know, was seduced by perspective and uh, drew very well as a, as a true Renaissance master. Uh, he painted, he, you know, like, like all artists at the time, they did everything, like uh, Raphael himself. But Raphael died young at, at 37. Anyway, so this is Baltasare Peruzzi. Um, this is how I usually begin showing some graphic work, some drawings, and then I'll show some built work. Again, today we'll also talk about uh, Juvara and um, Cardinal, uh, Douglas Cardinal, uh, a contemporary architect. All three of them born on March 7th, but of, of course not the same year. Well, uh, this is the plan of uh, San Pietro. I didn't know he did a scheme for San Pietro as well. I go rather quickly because we have uh, three presentations today and uh, so there is a lot of material to show. This is just to familiarize uh, us a little bit with the graphic works of this important, uh, important uh, Renaissance architect. Baltasare Peruzzi. paintings. He also painted and painted well, as you can see. I wish, to be honest with you, we'll have again architects who paint, who do sculptures. And I know there are such architects in our time too, and in our country too. But I would like to see more of this actually, because uh, it's good for the soul, I would, I would think. 
Now, of course, this kind of painting requires, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, skill and, and so on. But uh, we can paint, uh, let's say, in a modern way, like Malevich, and the things get simpler. After all, to paint a black square, perhaps, is not so difficult. Baltazare Peruzzi, architecture. Now we arrive at his built works. Villa Farnesiana in Rome. The, this, this villa was constructed by Baltasare Peruzzi between 1508 and 1511 in commission by Agostino Chigi. Uh, I don't know. I mean, these villas are as they are. You know, they are impressive mainly because of their age. But who knows? Some people would, uh, would uh, feel very attracted by them. I personally, I like it more when it is, uh, you know, like this, a little bit affected by the elements, showing its age. Like uh, Bernard Chumi said that um, Villa Savoie, um, at, the, at the time when it was affected by uh, neglect, uh, at that time, Bernard Chumi said the most architectural thing about it was the state of decay it was in. Anyway, a Renaissance Villa by Baltasare Peruzzi. What I do here is mainly to initiate an interest or to encourage an interest in a certain architect or a certain work. And then, of course, everybody can uh, go in depth. Uh, on, on, on his or her own to further study what, uh, what uh, a certain architect uh, produced. We see also the importance of trompe l'oeil. You know, the, the painting was a, 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 an intrinsic part of architecture. And, uh, you know, uh, this is something we don't do any longer, but uh, who knows, maybe uh, if Mr. Putin allows us, we could bring back, um, you know, uh, bidimensional art to the tridimensional tri art or three-dimensional art of architecture. So this is Villa Farnesiana by Peruzzi, by uh, Baltasare Peruzzi, uh, built at the beginning of the 16th century. Now, Raffaele Loggia, uh, the, the Psyche, the Psyche, uh, Loggia di Psyche, the Loggia of, uh, of, of Psyche, on pen and pendentives. <clears throat> this was painted by Raffaele, not by Peruzzi. But you can imagine the importance of this villa if someone like Raphael was invited to use his skill to adorn, uh, you know, uh, if we can say adorn is more than an adornment, is a, is a major, uh, you know, uh, fresco. Now, Sala delle, delle Prospettive, uh, you see here on the right, uh, you know, the, um, the trompe l'oeil, um, you know, again, this is something we don't use any longer, but that's maybe because we, we neglect the Vita Contemplativa and um, we, we might think we are too serious uh, these days to employ such uh, deceiving devices, but they were very valued, uh, not just during the Renaissance, but other times in history as well. These columns do not exist, they are just painted. I mean, they do not exist as architecture, but they are, they are painted in a rather convincing way. Of course, the architect understands, even these people in front of me, it, that it's a, it's a trompe l'oeil. But um, uh, again, you know, it's a different world. It was a different world. But we cannot deny, you know, uh, the ingenuity and, uh, you know, it, yes, it, it, it adds something to the room. The room is huge. You see here the silu human silhouette, even if it's a child, it's still a huge room by today's standards. Palazzo Massimo alla Colone. Uh, the Palazzo Massimo alla Colone is a Renaissance palace in Rome. The palace was designed by Baltasare Peruzzi 
1532-1536 on a site of three contiguous palaces owned by the old Roman Massimo family and built after Arson destroyed the earlier structures during the sack of Rome, which took place in 1527. In addition, the curved facade was dictated by foundations built upon the stands for the stadium of the Emperor Domitian. It, it, it fronts the now busy course of Vittorio Emanuele, a few hundred yards from the front of the church of Sant'Andrea della Valle. This is a very interesting building, in my opinion, by Peruzzi. It's almost manneristic, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, its fluidity is a little bit at odds with what we know about the Renaissance, but we understand, I hope I have here a plan. Yes, you see, you see the plan here, a difficult site. And, uh, and uh, I think he did a very good job although maybe not using the canons of, of uh, Renaissance per se, uh, there is uh, some, some distortion here. This, the, this curvature creates, in my opinion, um, uh, you know, a certain uh, disjunction from the, you know, the, for example, the first villa that we saw by him, um, Farnesiana. This is a deep, but yes, this is part of the of the the urban fabric of Rome. So it's a different context, but it's an interesting building. If the pandemic goes away and we'll we'll we'll, we'll go back to Rome, maybe this building will be on the list of, of sites to see. Uh, Baltasare uh, Peruzzi. Now you see how deceiving uh, an elevation, a drone elevation is from the reality of the building built, because here you don't actually realize the, the curvature of, of, of the building. You know, between the built work and the drone work is a, is a distance. Here it seems flat and, uh, you know, static, and in reality it's not like this. Yes, he draws, or who drew, who drew the plan, but uh, the, the elevation, although correct from an Euclidean point of view, it's not actually telling quite uh, the factual truth. And you see the building is uh, truly, you know, uh, yes, in a, in a difficult, uh, in a difficult site. Uh, an interesting building in my opinion. Yes, the courtyard does look more Renaissance than the front elevation. Baltasare Peruzzi. <clears throat> I like these old pictures. Of almost anything, an old uh, photograph is romantically uh, seductive because of the passage of time. Uh, uh, but look at these columns, you know, they are, um, there is something here that is, um, you know, it doesn't have that certitude, that rigid certitude of, uh, you know, Renaissance, uh, uh, you know, uh, aesthetics is, is something a little bit unsettling, maybe because of the different spacing, you know, you have, uh, in, uh, we, we just have six columns. But between the six columns, we have uh, three different openings, one, two, and three. And, and it's also the curvature, the slight curvature, which creates uh, an additional uh, set of, uh, an additional uh, sense of uh, being different, so to speak. 